Hi, I am a tutor in Applabs. Today we are going to discuss about MATLAB coding guidelines part I. Um, use existing functions, develop a new function that is correct, readable, and reasonably flexible can be a significant task. Using an existing function that provides some or all required functionality is likely to be more effective. You can use the existing functions as prototypes or starting points of, for your code. Eliminate overlapping functions. If you find functions that perform similar tasks with similar interfaces, then consider combining them into a single function. If appropriate, this function can have sub-functions which capture code for detailed differences in the tasks. Provide some generality in the functions. Functions should usually be flexible enough to accept appropriate input variables as scalars, vectors, and arrays of two dimensions when these are likely to be used. Functions with input arguments that commonly have more than one representation should work with all of them. For example, image processing function should at least work with an in, unsigned integer 8 and double input variables. <coughs> Write a function at one level of abstraction. Your code is more readable and more likely to be usable when you uh, program a function at a consistent level of abstraction. Simple abstractions are easily digested changes in implementation. They can also help clarify the role and organization of the code. Mixed levels of an occur in selection constructs where some parts call other functions and some contain detailed statements. An example of code with more than one level of abstraction is uh, function y consolidate x comma actions, which I can case sum v is equal to sum of x, but case first n rows is equal to size x comma one, if n rows is equal to equal to one, y is equal to x one, else y is equal to x one uh, comma colon. And uh, if you make uh, for first a function, you can get more readable code at a single level of abstraction, function y is for consolidate x comma actions, which action sum y is for some x and case plus y is for first x. And if you uh, code uh, write convenience functions, if you code even simple toss functions, then you can assign them function handles and treat them consistently with the related functions. A simple example of a convenience function compatible with a basic form of standard functions like sum or mean is function y is equal to first x, y is equal to x of one comma colon. You can then make a function handle to use the same way as standard function handles. H first at, uh, is equal to at first. Use this function, you can rewrite, consolidate as function y is equal to under the x comma, comma f handle and y is equal to f handle of x. Make interaction clear. A function interacts with other code through input output arguments and global variables. The use of arguments is almost always clearer and better than the use of global variables. Name all input arguments. Avoid literal numbers when calling functions. The meaning of a number is usually less clear than the meaning of a named variable. Changing code that uses named variables is easier than changing code that has literal numbers. Replace foo alpha comma two with a uh, with foo alpha comma uh, flavor. A literal number is acceptable in conventional uses such as dimension argument. Write boolean function to return true or false. Avoid other written values that may confuse the user or maintainer such as yes, no, or no. Make logical output function and function name consistent. The output of a logical function should be true if the function name implies uh, true when the condition is met. Um, for the function, um, val is in range is for the is in range val value. The output variable value in range should be true when the value is in range. Minimize input flag arguments. The common practice of using zero or one as an input flag argument is concise but problematic. It means that the function does more than one thing. It is not obvious which value of the argument selects, which option. It is not obvious which option is the default. 
some better alternatives are as follows, right? Two functions, two C, a parameter value pair. Two C function handle argument. For example, a bad function in the stress of two bars compared to either the mean or the median absolute deviation using syntax mad x, mad x comma zero, mad x comma one. <coughs> in the face of five arguments, a computer function output would be easier to understand using median absolute deviation x and median absolute deviation x, or mad x estimate and median, or mad x at median. Great arguments in useful order. Consider the order of input and output functions arguments, especially for optional arguments. If the input argument is specific more often than P or B is optional, then write the function as from A comma B rather than A B comma A. If the output argument C is used more than often than T, then or is needed to complete D, then we write the function as C comma D is equal to 4 rather than D comma C is equal to 4. Use lazy evaluation, avoid computing unneeded variables. Secondary outputs should only be computed if the user calls the function with the arguments for them, unless the secondary outputs are computed as a natural part of the computing the primary output. Use a n argument out to determine whether second output must be computed. Function C comma D O A compute C. If n argument is the one, compute D and <clears throat> make input or array consistent functions that produce output arrays of the same type and size as the input arrays should usually arrange those output arrays in the same orientation as the input. Do not turn columns into rows casually. Use a structure to replace a long list of function arguments. Usability of a function decreases as the number of arguments grows, especially when some arguments are optional. The arguments must be provided in order, and this order is often not obvious. The roles of the arguments may be unclear. Consider using structures whenever the number of arguments exceeds four. The structure can allow a change to the number of values passed to or from the function that is compatible with the existing external code particularly other functions. For example, one function may use fields A, B, C of a structure, whereas another function use fields A, B, D uh, using a structure may be easier than keeping track of individual variables, especially if you have changes to its original variables. Consider an option structure, some tasks such as optimization require a number of operational parameters. Use an option structure as an input argument can simplify a function call, a structure is easier to parse than a string of parameter value pairs. It can also provide a convenient way to define modifiable default parameters. You can establish your preferred values once and use them in many places. If the same options are used for more than one function, then it is easier to keep them consistent if they are in a structure. Consider writing a function that establishes the structure in the default way that can be modified. You can also use it to constrain parameter values that are input as arguments to be within the validity limits. Consider where uh, uh, again and where are group. Whenever a function accepts an arbitrary number of inputs, use where are again. It is often better to use the input parser object than to write your own code to handle a variable name of input. The input parser is particularly convenient to deal with parameter value pairs. When a function accepts an arbitrary number of outputs, use where uh, uh, arg out. <coughs> Note that the output arguments will be in a cell array. Use parameter value pairs for optional unordered input arguments. The input arguments of standard functions are listed in order. This can be inconvenient when some arguments are unneeded based on preceding arguments or when the user may not remember argument order. Parameter value pairs make it easier to deal with these situations. Use parameter value pairs for optional and order input arguments with an appropriate function definition. The order dependent usage pattern order customer C size color form can be replaced with an order independent version which can be used as pattern is equal to order customer C size large color pattern form a diagonal or pattern order customer C says large form diagonal pattern red. 
in general uh, use caller variable names consistent with the function argument names when calling the function function foo alpha beta comma beta use foo alpha comma beta or foo this alpha this beta as long as the variable names are meaningful in both the function and calling code context this practice makes it easier to quickly scan the code and match the variables to the arguments if any imports where they are easy to find it can be convenient to import functions that are in namespace packages place import statements in a block near the beginning of the function use anonymous function rather than inline functions there are both ways these are both ways uh, to create and use very short functions without making this much support faster on function anonymous function generate function handles rather than function definitions they are more faster than inline functions and more likely to be supported in future cases anonymous function generates a line or r is to kept in then it should be written as function so we can understand what it is Use function handles. Use function handles rather than inline functions or function name strings in functions that use input arguments happening to functions, functions, function, function. When you can, function handles have the advantage that they can be used outside the usual scope and move directly to function name strings. Replace code that would use foo x comma y compare with code that would Those who have come away at compare. Avoid inclusion hidden side effects. Hidden side effects confuse the reader about what the function will actually do. Side effects that only sometimes occur are even more problematic. An example of a function with a non-obvious side effect is ist. It returns ist of lambda as a variable if there is an output argument. There is not. This makes it called as a slide effect. Refactor. Refactoring means changing the intervals of an existing code module for better design without changing its external behavior. Refactoring increases adaptability by decreasing complexity. Many of us write functions during development that become too long and include redundancies. Refactor this code. When refactoring, you should would typically replace an explicit number with a named constant or variable. Replace a core and different name with a better one. Extract a block of code and convert it to a function. Replace duplicate code with a function. Remove misleading comments. Best practice for refactoring code include make only one change at a time. Run tests after each change. Use version control. Write input function. Data file input format and content. Are often messy and subject to change. Localizing the code that reads the input improves maintainability. Avoid mixing input code with computation other than pre-processing code in a single function. Mixed purpose functions are unlikely to have clean, stable interfaces. Consider storing input data in a mat file with named variables for multiple processing accesses. An easy way to prototype an input function is to use the desktop import data feature. The code generated by this feature can serve as the base for development. Provide some input validity checking. You can improve the validity of many functions by checking the type and range of numerical input as well as the validity of character strings. This is especially important for more general purpose functions. Invalid input can easily lead to an error that stops execution. Validity checking allows more gracefully error handling. The appropriate amount of validity checking is a judgment call, depending on expected use. The input process of the val uh, validate attributes uh, and validate string functions are very helpful for validity checking. Provide some input validity checking. There is an old saying in software development: "Garbage is garbage." Now, this attitude and practice, attitude and practice is no longer acceptable. If the input is not as expected, then produce an exception error or warning as appropriate. If the exception should be continued, then set the output variables to adjustable values such as an A and NaN, blank or empty. Accept NaN values in data. 
NAN is an often used for missing data. If the NAN is encoded in data, then try to work out of it. You may want to use the NAN store functions, the statistical toolbox, or write your own. Often it is useful to use any uh, yeast NAN X to quickly screen for the presence of NAN entries. Use FEOF for reading files. Do not depend on simply counting an expected number of lines or data it is when reading input data files. This can easily lead to end of file errors or incomplete input. A better approach is to read until end of file. Or for this approach, it can be as simple as file not, uh, file end up, uh, file read, text line, line, line the uh, file ID can. A data input function should usually return the number of lines or <coughs> value reads with codes such as island is zero, while not if you have field file ID, text line, island, you have get L um, file ID. Island is what island plus one, end. Make output modules. Output file requirements are subject to change without notice. Avoid mixing output code with computation in a single function. Mixed purpose functions are unlikely to be reusable. Format output for easy use. If the output will mostly likely to be read by a human, then make it self descriptive and easy to read. Present displayed or printed output in a consistent manner. Apply intermediaries and digest. The output is more likely to be read by software than a person, then make it easy to automatically parse. If both users are important, then make the output easy to parse and write a formatted function to produce a human readable version. Provide for automation. Enable automated data processing by using number and date conventions in file names. You can easily generate file names such as data 101 or 102 etc. in a loop. Similarly, you can generate data underscore 200701, data underscore 200702, etc. You can also access multiple data folders when you have made the folder names easy to generate or select. If the file names are not in a specific numerical or alphabetical order, then you can use the this function to collect the data file names that are present, right? something like these for their uh, star dot tag in files is equal to D for I file one uh, in files data is equal to T file dot name. Keep classes simple. Simple classes are easier to design, code, document, read, and understand. Classes that try to do too much cause problems in testing and use. The smaller the public interface of a class, the easier it is to learn. One of the major benefits of optional into programming is that it encourages serious thought about which data being together and what will be done with them. If a class seems too big, then refactor it into smaller, simpler classes. Replace a class such as business with classes such as product, employee, customer, and so on. Keep classes simple. If a method is not needed, then do not include it. Do not include a method for functionality that can be achieved with the existing methods. You will find it much easier to add a method later than to take, take one out. If you have a method, credit, debit, then you may not need transaction. Avoid classes and um, with ambiguous overlap. The readers should have a good idea about the meaning of a class without having to wonder about the difference between two or more classes. If both customer info and customer data are classes, then try to replace them with a single class customer. Construct valid objects. In object oriented probing, the constructor method is a contract with the users of the object. It tells them everything that is required to make a valid object. If the requirement are met, then the constructor must create a valid object. In particular, it must create all properties that can be accessed by its get-related methods. If the client class has properties, where they address, then you need to have a constructor method such as 
mention this claim claim priority address, claim priority dot priority is equal to priority, claim dot address is equal to address. Construct uh, valid object, if the construct allows an incomplete set of property values in its input argument list, then it must create valid default values for time dependent properties. These default values can be empty or NAN only if they are valid for these properties. If you write a constructor such as function this client client priority, if n are again greater than zero, client priority dot priority is for priority n, then you need to set a default value such as properties. Uh, priority is equal to nan n. Follow constructor conventions. If the constructor is called with no input variables, then return an error unless you can construct a valid object. If the input is a list of um, property values or a parameter value list, then return an error unless you can construct a valid object uh, from the input variables. If uh, the only input variable is an object of the same class, then return it. Constructing classes with this behavior makes it easier to write method that support appropriate flexibility in the input variables without leading to problems in use. Follow construct convention, right? A constructor something like this function, this client client priority in our game, greater than zero, this client uh, dot priority is for priority, else error supply and input argument end. end. Even small simple methods, small methods are easier to test and understand than complicated methods. A method should perform only one task and you should be able to define it in a sentence or two. If the dot does not have a simple point definition, then split it into two dots and write two methods. Even if these methods are only called in one context, they are likely to be easier to read, understand, and test than one large conglomerate method. A large method such as process signal should be replaced with smaller methods, remove bias, detect array well. Write methods that you can unit test as with functions with methods with low coupling. Write cause in the most methods as functions rather than parts of the class C, class D file, file, so that you can test them easily. This practice will also keep the class def file short and easy to read. The constructor and prototype method must be in the class def file. Other methods should be functions in a private or a directory. Do not write a method that can produce in an invalid property. If a method assigns a value to a property, then it must assign a valid value. For example, if a property must be positive, then no method or method input variable should be able to make it negative. This practice is particularly an issue for such methods and public properties. Avoid incomplete public methods. Do not write a method that can produce inconsistent properties. This can occur if the method can uh, change only one property without changing closely linked properties. For example, if date is represented in year, month, and day properties, then do not write a method that can change only one of them. In some cases, careful property definition or attribute choices can reduce the likelihood of incomplete public methods. Avoid incomplete public methods. In this example, you could write a properties date number and uh, our properties set access is equal to private, year, month, the day, etc. You would then write a public method such as change date that would change the link to properties as needed. Try to make properties private. By default, MATLAB makes properties public with public get and set methods. The recommended object to practice is to make properties private or protected whenever possible because incompletion is a heading principle for object oriented design. The use of public properties reduces incompletion because it negates data and implementation ID. If a class computes age from birthday, then use properties set access to private age and or possibly properties set access is called private get access for private age end. Try to make properties private. The uh, disadvantage of private properties is that they cannot be used directly with the usual MATLAB array indexing. 
you may decide to uh, keep some properties public to maintain this compatibility. For a public property, you can simply use standard indexing and write stocks dot price one comma minus to three equal to zero. For a private property, you would need an access function price stocks dot get price price one comma one minus to three uh, equal to zero stock dot set price to price. The code using a public property is familiar to MATLAB programmers and more compact. The code using a private property supports encapsulation, provides an opportunity for argument, variable checking, for example, to contain constraint the array index to be within the current array size. Do not expose properties to behavior. Use a method to change a property that has behavior. Although direct access to the property can work, but this is likely to be misled the user. For example, the day of the month may be a property. Changing it may require uh, changing the month. Replace access such as market day of month, market day of month plus one, or um, set um, get market dot day of month plus one with a method that can be used as increment day market comma one, or better market uh, increment day one. Avoid reading methods with many input arguments. Consolidate the input arguments into fewer higher level variables. Example structures are high smaller methods, as with functions methods with many arguments are difficult to understand and use. Validate method argument values. Do not trust that variables cost as input arguments will be exactly as expected. In general, check the input variables for type and range. For example, function display set weight display is comma value. If value is less than zero, error, use an alternative weight. And this package dot weight is equal value end. Check for a property's existence before using it. Methods, especially public methods that involve get access, should protect themselves against possible missing or invalid properties, this problem can easily occur as the result of incomplete constructor or certain methods. Refract repeated code into methods. It is difficult to keep repeated method code consistent with the all but the inevitable changes. Removing duplication is a crucial element of refactoring. Writing a separate or private method can ease this maintenance. If you find yourself copying and pasting among methods of a class, then consider cutting and Pacing to a new method instead. Overload standard functions when possible. Using the standard MATLAB function makes it easier to recognize the meaning of the method and avoid misspellings in use. Most standard functions have been used extensively and are likely to have fewer defects than new code. If the sales.bean method computes the bean of a numerical array, then overload the standard bean function and then writing a custom method to perform the task. Avoid unconventional usage of workload name. Use a standard function name uh, for an um, overload does, that does something different will confuse the reader. For example, should perform an addition, not a concatenation or some other operation. Do not overload and and or you will lose the ability to short circuit expression evaluation. Short circuiting is valuable for both error reduction and performance improvement. Do not get carried away uh, with inheritance. MATLAB language allows multiple levels of inheritance. That is, for example, defining a class as a subclass, a class, subclass of a superclass. This practice can be difficult to design, maintain, and understand. The MATLAB language allows, also allows multiple inheritance, that is, defining a class as a subclass of two or more superclasses. This practice can also be difficult to design, maintain, and understand. In particular, changing one of the superclasses can lead to conflicts that are awkward to resolve. Place method functions in the folder consistently. Functions that are overloads and use the objects as an input argument must be in the active folder. Functions that do not use the object as an input argument must be on the MATLAB path. 
typically in the presence of the active holder. Functions that are not overload, but use the object as an input argument could in principle be either holder, place them in the act folder to well provide the channel. Use Java syntax for Java method. We generally use standard Java step to invoke method of Java objects, chart, set, y label, dollar. You can also use the MATLAB syntax, set, chart, y label, dollar. Avoid using mixer syntax, set, y label, chart, command, dollar. Use appropriate error handling. Errors happen and they do handle them based on security and context. MATLAB provides several choices for dealing with the errors. Let the error or the program. Show an error message. Return an error code. Return NAN or um, uh, blank code, blank. Generate a warning. In general, use the function error or warning depending on severity. Do not use the function display to issue errors or warnings. Prepare for errors. Both data and code are potential error sources. Write defensive code to check for errors early and often. Try to provide a graceful way to deal with errors. In general, errors should be caught in low-level routines and fixed or passed on to the high-level routines for resolution. A useful tool for protection against errors conditions is the try and catch method. Try with sample data, I sample catch index error, index minimum, I sample comma n samples, this sample is data index name. Prepare for errors. Another line of defense is to use property ordered expressions in if statements so that evaluation security can avoid evaluation of uh, expressions that will trigger an error. If exists A and M is not is empty, A end. Thank you.